So to begin with, I would like to ask why is the government keen to take initiatives to attract investors from the pharma sector? And how much is the pharma sector is helping in building the economy of the state government? Well, if you think about India, if you think about Telangana, if you think about uh, the world post-pandemic, I think what would become very apparent and very uh, uh, clear is that um, life sciences as a sector and pharmaceuticals more specially, more specifically uh, as, as a subsector is something that is here to stay because now with the whole of humanity after the pandemic focusing on healthcare and with industry as well shaping up rather well, I think India has really become a very, very strong powerhouse of, uh, you know, for the, for the entire world in terms of production, in terms of its scale, etc. Particularly um, Telangana, which produces 40% uh, of India's pharmaceuticals, which produces 35% of global vaccines, is definitely one of the most important life sciences hubs in the world. Now, how does that contribute to the state? Of course, in terms of employment, we have more than 425,000 people, 425,000 people working directly in the pharma sector. And I can think of at least two and a half times that number working indirectly in the sector. It contributes to taxes, it contributes to employment, it contributes to our uh, overall uh, you know, uh, country's abilities. And of course, uh, you know, India is, uh, as everybody you know, keeps repeating, India is the pharmacy of the world. And I think Telangana is a very, very important hub in that overall, uh, overall piece. So, can you apprise us about the Pharma City project? Uh, why is there a delay in executing the project? Uh, and uh, yeah, you can take that first. The thing is, it's the world's largest pharma cluster. You know, we are uh, targeting about 19,000 of acres. It's the single largest cluster for pharmaceuticals anywhere in the world. And uh, in a democracy, unfortunately, once in a while, uh, you know, when you want to do things right, uh, you'll have to go through several challenges. And one of them, of course, is uh, when we were going through the land acquisition process, um, some of the farmers went to a court of law, but uh, uh, even though the matter is sub judice, now the final hearings are over in the Telangana State High Court. I'm very hopeful that it will be uh, done. Uh, it will be cleared very soon. Once that happens, the most important aspect of uh, Pharma City is uh, that this is a project of not national importance, but international importance, considering mm -hmm. what has happened over the last couple of years, especially. More importantly, this will spur the local economy. It is set to attract nearly $8 billion of investment. Mm -hmm and will create hundreds of thousands of jobs and of course add to the state's revenues, country's prosperity and uh, most importantly again, it will add value to humanity in terms of what it can offer as we move forward. You know, we are talking about cell and gene therapies, we are talking about precision medicine, all these areas. In fact, Pharma City is not a project where just ma manufacturing will happen. We'll have a lot of research, development, innovation. In fact, it will have an embedded life sciences university. So all these ingredients is what will help India take on the powers, the large manufacturing countries like China, US, etc. as we move forward and uh, scale, you know, grow up the value chain. So uh, how it's uh, going to benefit the, uh, like particularly the bulk drugs and API industry had given certain numbers in this session before. If you can just give us a few See, numbers. See, APIs today, India, is, India and the rest of the world also is heavily dependent on China. China. And uh, unless we ensure that we have entire supply chain completely you know, uh, independent uh, for our own domestic needs at least, I think we will be in trouble in the, in the event of... Uh, any future pandemics, any future exigencies. So that's one piece which is extremely important for us to understand. From the bulk drugs perspective, as you all know, Hyderabad is a leader mm -hmm. in India as it is, but we need to consolidate and we need to, again, like I said, move up from the volume angle to the value side. Mm -hmm. And we need to start identifying opportunities where we can actually ensure that things happen at a scale and that brings in economies of scale to the manufacturers so that they can become, in fact, uh, suppliers, not just to the domestic industry, but also abroad. And more importantly, like I said, you also have to start looking at innovation. In fact, as part of BioAsia, we are now uh, you know, conducting an innovat innovative uh, ch innovation challenge where we have 400 plus startups coming in. There is a jury sitting there. Uh, 75 startups have been shortlisted mm. and out of which five, sh five startups would be presenting at the valedictory. So innovation and you know, even no not just in terms of... Uh, 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 the tech innovation, but most importantly, even biopharma innovation 
in the form of what we are building, a bee hub, is also equally important so that uh, Hyderabad, Telangana, India grows and competes with the best in the world. So recently it was announced like uh, uh, WHO MRA, mRNA vaccine hub Correct. in Hyderabad will be coming in. So how is it going to help and boost the state as a global vaccine hub as you said? We are the vaccine hub for the world already. In fact, yeah. we produce 9 billion doses, 900 crore vaccines every year. But come next year, it will be 1400 crores, which is 50% of global vaccine production. With WHO coming in, because mm. you know, even among the vaccines, there are different technologies. Now mRNA, again, is, is in vogue. And with WHO coming in and partnering with local industry here, I think this will really put India and especially Hyderabad on the global map mm. and will continue to add value to not just Hyderabad and Telangana, but to the rest of the country. Not only WHO, in fact, World Economic Forum as well is setting up a center for fourth industrial revolution focused on life sciences, again, based out of Hyderabad. This is one of the very few centers where both WHO and WEF, the World Economic Forum, both are setting up large centers uh, that goes to show you the importance and the prominence of Hyderabad in the overall scheme of things of Telangana, in the overall scheme of things in the world, in, of, world of life sciences. So Hyderabad is regarded as a leading science city, by, uh, as you said. So can you tell us about the next big steps by the state as a facilitators in amalgamating IT and life sciences? Apart from this, you have any other big dreams because you said by 2030 it will be 200 million dollars. Well, we have many big dreams, but one of the things I think uh, we all are excited about is Hyderabad is not only uh, home to strong biology, but we're equally strong in technology. In fact, some of the most leading, uh, you know, leading technology companies have made Hyderabad their second biggest center. Google, Am Amazon, Apple, and I can go on, the list is long, Microsoft, etc. Now, the confluence point of technology and biology is very exciting because now that is how you're able to bring in value, that is how you'll be able to add, uh, you know, um, in dollar terms, bottom line to your business as well. So Novartis, as a case in point, has nearly 9,000 people working out of Hyderabad. Now, most of these guys are biostatisticians, bioinformatics uh, engineers, and they're into digital drug discovery, digital uh, you know, simulation, a lot of clinical uh, research that happens online. So these are the things I think the world is looking for. Innovation engines, you know, uh, uh, where Technology and biology powers and uh, strengths are combined to make it uh, uh, very, very useful for the enterprises. So, uh, in regards to medi medical colleges in Telangana, what is that you're upset with the central government? Because recently you had uh, said, what exactly is the state government's demand? What is your message for the, like, you know, what is, what is that you want? Well, Telangana is an integral part of India. Mm -hmm. And uh, Telangana has, uh, in fact, is one of the most, uh, you know, positive and progressive states in India. So, when Government of India was sanctioning new medical colleges, they had sanctioned 157 medical colleges. Unfortunately, not a single one was sanctioned to Telangana. Hmm. And later on, when 157 nursing colleges were sanctioned, not a single one was sanctioned to Telangana. So, therefore, we obviously, you know, expressed our dissatisfaction and we, we raised our voice hmm. and said, uh, we, you know, we are an integral part of India. And we are a performing state. Just because we are not politically aligned with you does not mean that uh, you disincentivize or, or you penalize us. So that was basically what it was about. But that doesn't stop us. That did not stop us from setting up our own medical colleges in each and every district, in the 33 um, districts that we have. In fact, today Telangana has the highest number of beds, uh, highest number of medical seats per 100,000 population for any state in India. And this is despite Government of India not coming forward to work with us. But, uh, you know, it's their prerogative. It's their uh, uh, ultimately uh, decision. While we, of course, in a democracy have the right to protest, we can't, uh, you know, have it our way all the time. Okay. One last question. How are you balancing between uh, being an industry-friendly government as well as being pro-farmer as well? So, uh, like... I don't think they are mutually exclusive. I mean, uh, you, have to, you have to realize that uh, they are two very different kind of subjects and I'm sure uh, both go hand in hand because our, our agriculture has expanded by 119% mm -hmm. over the last uh, eight years. Our industry has been growing rapidly, not only industry. In fact, our green cover has increased by 7.7%. Telangana is a very unique state where we have a very holistic and integrated approach to how we do things. So we have development and welfare going hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Our IT exports have risen from 57,000 crores to 1,83,000 crores. Like I said, our agriculture exports are also booming. While our industry is growing, our environment is also growing. 
our rural development is doing well, our urban development is also doing well. So we are one of those rare states which has got its priorities right and we know what the common man on the grassroots actually wants. So therefore, I think our chief minister is driving this, uh, scripting this beautiful story of a very inclusive growth with innovation and infrastructure as a focus areas.